Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Mitch Gen, the Chief Medical Officer for Hue Light USA. Today, I want to give a good summary looking at the components that make molecular hydrogen so, so important for a clinician like myself to use in my patients. Molecular hydrogen can quell the hydroxyperoxyl as well as the perioxynitrate free radicals. These are the most violent of the free radicals, and they certainly can do significant damage eventually, basically, to the DNA. Molecular hydrogen has several important characteristics that you should be aware of in this summary. It is anti-inflammatory. It's anti-allergenic. There's autoimmune modulation. It increases athletic capabilities. It decreases fatigue and increases metabolic stimulation. Pretty much, it attends to all the underlying causes of chronic disease. Molecular hydrogen could also be used in acute situations. And they've seen this in Japanese medical schools by certain researchers that have noted that concentrated hydrogen gas, the molecular hydrogen that's breathed in, when applied especially to the animal model, which is where we get our ideas most of the time when we do study, and this is to mice, they found the mice recovered after cardiovascular pulmonary resuscitation, meaning their heart lungs stopped. Therefore, Cardio side effects have been reduced, survival rates have, were increased, and the risk of disability from the sequelae have also been suppressed. So this may become an integral part of pretty much hospitals and ERs where there is a CPR type of situation that's been performed, especially if it can reduce the heavy side effects which cause so much of the situational difficulties for the patients after such procedures. Molecular hydrogen capability of increasing NRF2, NRF2, not only increases the antioxidant production of the mitochondria, because that's what NRF2 does when it's stimulated, but it is distinctly involved in phase two detoxification of the liver. So you're improving the amount of antioxid antioxidants while improving liver detoxification. Now, I know many watching will believe in lay people as well as uh, practitioners that drinking hydrogen water is effective. There are many companies pushing, yeah, you should drink hydrogen water, but the statistics clearly don't support that. Why? Well, one hour of inhaled hydrogen, they found, is equal to drinking 72 tons of hydrogen water. Who can do that? It's impossible. So you see the huge disparity and there's no way to make it up by trying to drink more and more water. The molecular hydrogen inhalation is no question the best way of getting the proper dose in someone. Now, after 30 minutes of inhalation of molecular hydrogen, we could detect it even in the venous blood and even one hour after inhalation through the nose, it goes into the lung and then into the bloodstream. And we're seeing concentrations that are very significant of two parts per million of the venous blood of hydrogen. Now, because of the positive advantages of inhaling or breathing in through the nose, molecular hydrogen, one of the significant effects is the treatment that we can use it for and has been shown to help in cerebral infarctions. Now, molecular hydrogen has the ability, because it's so small, to transverse the blood-brain barrier. It gets to the area of where the cerebral infarct is and helps other situations that are central nervous system problem and they are originated there, including, for example, Parkinson's disease. Nitric oxide activation, and you've heard so much of this gazotransmitter, nitric oxide along with hydrogen sulfide, along with carbon monoxide are made under normal conditions in small amounts that help dilate the blood vessels and get blood to different parts of the body. Now, nitric oxide activation is especially with a combination of using the inhaled molecular hydrogen and photobiomodulation therapy, which we talked about in the past, basically enhanced blood flow is going to be seen, especially in the capillary. And remember, the capillaries are the terminal endings of our circulatory system. 
This, no question, will reduce microvascular disease, which is so common and pervasive in our population. Now, perhaps not thought of before, molecular hydrogen also has a place in cancer therapies, especially when you need an increase in antioxidant activity. This would very much be indicated. Remember, the stimulation of NRF2 will increase in the mitochondria in the mitochondria's antioxidant effects. And due to the Warburg effect in all cancer cells, that's the end product of lactate from anaerobic glycolysis and eventually becoming lactic acid due to this fermentation process, well, that's a significant issue in the metabolic cancer meta mitigation. When molecular hydrogen is inhaled, lactic acid is not stored. Now, this is an unbelievably important thing, especially when you consider every single cancer cell does ferment from pyruvate to lactate and eventually losing a proton, it becomes lactic acid. And in this case, this lactic acid gets burned up and excessive reactive oxygen species are suppressed. Now, it's extremely important concept and it goes hand in hand with other therapies that interrupt the fermentation process, such as dichloroacetate and even been shown very high doses of intravenous vitamin C. As mentioned before, athletes perform better in many of the studies when they have inhaled molecular hydrogen prior to their specific events that they have. So this is a great therapy to be done by professional and even amateurs that are going out to make sure it protects them and they perform the best. And one of the most important aspects of molecular hydrogen usage in patient that's extremely important to me as a clinician is that pretty much all chronically ill patients have autonomic nervous system imbalances or dysfunction. Studies clearly have shown that molecular balances in the ANS does make a huge difference. In 2018, a university hospital in Germany conducted research whereby the conclusion was fatigue occurs when the brain gets stressed. It is what the autonomic nervous system loses when it isn't functioning properly. And that's because the sympathetic component is way out of balance to the parasympathetic. Typically, stressed individuals have engaged their sympathetic discharge overloads and without bridle, without being checked, it does not allow for the parasympathetic enough to balance the system. Problems occur. So even working on a computer for long periods of time, you will get an imbalance of the autonomic system, which is skewed towards persistent sympathetic fight or flight response. This all leads to the brain, fatigue, memory empowerment, but with inhaled molecular hydrogen, you can increase the function of the cerebrum. So what? Well, that's because the cerebrum controls the autonomic nervous system. So due to hydrogen being the smallest element, it has the capability of easily going past the blood brain barrier and getting into the brain. What does that do? It reduces reactive oxygen species. It balances the autonomic nervous system and makes it exquisitely important for so many patients. In summary, inhaled molecular hydrogen has an inhibitory effect on the fight or flight response, the sympathetic component. We are driven constantly. Everything in our body where the autonomic nervous system handles, everything that we do subconsciously is initiated by the sympathetic nervous system. But we want the parasympathetic to quietly calm it down. Now, according to Dr. Yada, his studies have shown using inhalation of hydrogen, meiosis increases constriction of the eyes. When the sympathetic nerves are activated, the blood is concentrated at the eyes as part of the fight or flight, we're able to see better. Now again, the assumption is made that changes caused by inhalation of molecular hydrogen are due to the suppression of the sympathetic nervous system, which maintains the autonomic nervous balance. Let's look at it from a different angle. If we have a tremendous amount of sympathetic discharge, 
we breathe in this molecular hydrogen and it quiets down the sympathetic discharge. It allows for our parasympathetic to engage and keep the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic, basically the whole ANS in check and balance. I don't see any other element, any other thing that I can do, although I can add other nutrients and things that have that effect. And so the combination of pretty much natural things, general measures like walking on the sand, barefooting in the grass, singing, humming, workout, breathing properly, all helped the parasympathetic regain, you know, its capability. Learning to calm down, doing meditation, exercise also helps. There are medications and there are natural elements that also can either increase the parasympathetic or decrease sympathetic tone. But what could be easier than having someone, a patient of yours, sit and inhale molecular hydrogen for one hour? The changes are astounding. I'm Dr. Mitch Gannon.